getting you pumped up here for the weekend. It's Friday, everybody. Made it to the end of the week here. So glad you're with us. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Nettie Irampour. Those were some spooky shots yes. that we had. Yes, yes. Okay. The, 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 the creepy, crawly baby mm -hmm. with the fangs and the blood coming down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know we're about uh, nine days away to Halloween when you see stuff like that around town. <laughs> the pumpkin patches, like, used to just be pumpkins. Now it's this whole <laughs> other thing, which we'll yes. show you because Chris Grow, hopefully he's, like, you know, surviving creepy it corn right mazes. Now. <laughs> creepy corn mazes. We'll get to all of that. But also, here's a quick check of your forecast waking up to some fog that kind of adds to the creep factor right and then through the clouds you may notice that big bright moon that's what you're seeing at the top of your screen but in places like Carlsbad visibility is down to four a third mile in Fallbrook we do have pretty cloudy skies across the area because of onshore flow now look at this monster storm to the north not quite getting to us but we will get some rain I'll let you know when that's happening also fill you in on what's going on with traffic I have advised him of his constitutional rights and at this time would like to enter a plea of not guilty. This morning, the husband of missing South Bay mother Maya Miliete is being held without bail after entering a not guilty plea. Now the focus turns to the search for Maya. News 8's Evan Narani is joining us live from Chula Vista this morning to give us a look at that first court appearance. And then what's going to be happening next, Evan? Well, right now they're continuing to search for the body of Maya Miliete. Again, although Larry Miliete is in custody right now, being held without bail, all the evidence that they have against him is circumstantial. They have GPS records. They have uh, video camera evidence. They have sound, of course, uh, hearing what sounds like gunshots in those videos. Now, keep in mind, they still have not found Maya herself. So the search continues for Maya Miliete. However, along the way, of course, it was yesterday's arraignment. This has been a very long week for the family of Maya Miliete. On Tuesday, Larry was arrested. Yesterday was his arraignment. Volunteers, the community members, and family members of Maya were all there for that arraignment yesterday, saying they are still hoping that along the way they will be able to find out more about what led to the disappearance of Maya, where she is, and hoping that that family can find some closure. We're hoping now that Larry is in custody, the community does feel more comfortable to speak out about anything you may have seen, anything that you heard. Now, members of Maya's family attended yesterday's hearing. At that hearing, Larry only spoke to his attorney and to answer a question from the judge, confirming that he was waiving his right to a speedy trial. The district attorney's office says that the evidence collected so far is mostly circumstantial as opposed to any physical evidence, but they believe it is enough to prove that Larry killed Maya Miliete. Volunteers who have spent the last nine and a half months searching for Maya were also in attendance at that arraignment yesterday. Her body still has not been found, but they have another search effort planned for Saturday. Now, Larry Miliete is being held without bail. He does have a bail review set for November 4th. That'll be the next time that it is a possibility that he could be, uh, he could see a bail posted, but keep in mind that that judge does not have to actually post a bail. It is just the bail review giving that a possibility. Uh, also keep in mind that uh, those search efforts will still be underway while the three Miliete children are currently with Larry Miliete's parents. Parents. Tonight, there is a vigil scheduled for 6 p.m. That'll be at San Miguel Park. Uh, at many of these search effort uh, parties, as well as uh, the vigils that we've seen in the past, we've seen family members of Maya Miliete in attendance. We do not know, though, whether that 6 p.m. Uh, San Miguel Park vigil is going to be uh, seen alongside members of Maya Miliete's family, uh, but also that is scheduled for here in Chula Vista. Outside the Chula Vista Police Department, I'm Evan Arani, News 8. Police are investigating this morning after two people were shot and killed at a high-rise apartment building downtown. A suspect is in custody. Authorities were called to an apartment on Island Avenue around 3 p.m. yesterday where they found a man and a woman dead inside one of the units. Police say a man who lived in that apartment reported the shooting but then left the scene. They tracked him down while driving on the freeway. He is being questioned. His five-year-old daughter, who was with him in the car, is in protective custody. This morning, one person is dead after being hit and killed by a car in Pacific Beach. It happened around uh, 8.45 last night at Garnett and Haines Street. The victim died in the hospital, and the driver stopped and is cooperating with investigators. And this morning, one woman is dead, a man wounded after actor Alec Baldwin discharged a prop firearm on the set of a movie in New Mexico. The movie's director of cinematography, Helena Hutchins, died, and 48-year-old director Joel Souza was hurt. Baldwin is starring in and co-producing this Western film. 
Authorities are trying to figure out what happened here. A weapons expert who has worked on film sets breaks down what he thinks may have happened. Those are all real firearms. What's fake about it is the ammunition. What I think happened is, is uh, people just didn't inspect the weapon and or did not inspect the ammunition that they were loading into it. So far, Alec Baldwin has not been charged. And this morning, the search for Brian Laundrie is over. The FBI says dental records confirm remains found at a Florida wildlife preserve and park are those of Laundrie. The remains, as well as a backpack and notebook of his, were found in an area the FBI says was underwater during earlier searches. Laundrie was the sole person of interest in the disappearance of his fiance, Gabby Petito. She's, her body, rather, was found last month in Wyoming. New this morning, Pfizer just released new data on its COVID-19 vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. It says the shot is 90% effective at protecting kids from infection. On Tuesday, an FDA panel will discuss emergency use authorization for Pfizer's vaccine for young kids. After that, the CDC would make the final recommendation. Meantime, starting today, millions of Americans are now eligible to get a COVID booster shot of any of the three vaccines, and you can mix and match from the brand you originally got. The CDC signed off on the new recommendations last night. All right, here's everything you need to know here. Moderna's booster is half the dose of the original two shots, and if you got Moderna for your first vaccines, here is who is eligible for a booster. If you are over 65, if you are 50 to 64 and have an underlying medical condition, and any adult with high risk of infection, these are the same qualifications as Pfizer. Moderna boosters also need to be six months after your second shot. If you got Johnson & Johnson, a booster is recommended for everyone 18 and up at least two months after the initial dose. Again, eligible recipients can choose which brand to get, even if it's different than your original vaccines. Today, City of San Diego employees are speaking out against the upcoming vaccine mandate for city workers. Some police, firefighters, lifeguards, and their spouses plan to voice their opposition at a media conference this afternoon. One of the biggest concerns is losing hundreds of law enforcement officers who could be fired if they decide not to get the vaccine. The city has already extended the deadline for its employees to get vaccinated from November 2nd to December 1st. Here we are on our Friday at 6.08 a.m., and it is going to be a decent weekend here, Netta. Yes, it will be. At least no rain for you. We might get a little mist at early tomorrow morning, but that's kind of it. So right now, what you're looking at, oh, yes, the clouds are out there. That's the glow of the moon. Uh, still, you know, slow to set here, but we will get to see that covering over our, uh, excuse me, <laughs> over the clouds as it is. Uh, most of San Diego County, of course, as you see, covered. We have onshore flow. It's here. Cooler temperatures will be upon us. So for the next few days, we're going to be in the 60s pretty much all the way through at least Monday. And now the storm rolls in late Sunday night, giving us a soggy Monday. So I'm warning you right now, heavy rain at times on Monday. The coast could get about a quarter to a half inch of rain. That includes inland valleys as well, with our mountains possibly an inch to an inch and a quarter. So it's going to be a wet one, but nowhere near as much rain as we'll get uh, across much of central and northern California. It will help our statewide drought, though. Visibility this morning, thanks to the marine layer. It's down to a third of a mile in Fallbrook, four in Carlsbad, and then two miles in Otay. So those seem to be the trouble spots right now. Uh, Fallbrook, you're at 54 under the patchy fog, 51 in Escondido, 42 in Ramona, 63 for downtown. Uh, we are looking at a pretty, you know, should be comfortable kind of day. I know the cloud coverage kind of makes you feel a little gloomy, but it's Friday, so everything will be fine. We're looking at upper 60s by 2 o'clock this afternoon. This is for downtown San Diego. So our highs really aren't going to get that high low 70s for inland valleys as opposed to the upper 70s of yesterday. So we were close to normal yesterday. Today we are now about five degrees or so below average. Now our skies are, uh, you know, pretty cloudy as you can see and that onshore flow all coming in because of this right here. You see this system to the north of us. Look at all that heavy rain they're getting right now. I mean, they're looking at, uh, you know, the possibility of one to three inches of rain now, but there will be back to back to back storms hitting this region. So it could be up to five inches of rain by the time the weekend gets here. Here's a check of what's going on with traffic and looking at places like downtown, some of our typical busy spots in the morning, all looks good. Rear speeds are normal in Chula Vista through National City right now, not noticing any backup. Take you way up north here near Pala Mesa on the 15, the left-hand shoulders blocked. Recovery work, there's a crash on the 15 northbound right at the 76, but that's really all we're noticing right now.